Hello YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Dungeon Defenders. Uh, something I want to point out right, is, right off the bat is that I am playing this with the lowest graphics setting. And that is because my computer is pretty slow. Um, it's a laptop so it's not like top of the line gaming PC or anything. Uh, so I keep it in the lowest graphics setting just to make sure that it runs smoothly. And honestly I think these graphics are great. They're totally acceptable. Uh, as as they are, so there's no problem, at least on my end, um, with playing with these graphics. Uh, but if you're thinking about playing the game, but you think, oh, the graphics aren't quite good enough, well, if you have a good enough PC, you can make the graphics cooler. And uh, maybe I'll show an episode or two uh, with those more advanced graphics. Which, I mean, they're not, like, super amazing, they're just, like, better lighting type of things. But, anyways... Uh, this stage is pretty similar uh, to the last one, Foundries and Forges. Uh, the only difference is that now uh, the pathways are a little different, and instead of um, what would be the term, instead of putting my defenses right where the doors are, I'm putting my defenses a little closer to the crystal. Um, that's because we're, there's two doors. Well, last time there was two doors as well, but, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, the doors split paths a lot quicker. So I could place two towers on both of these sides to make sure that I get everything, or I can do what I'm doing now and just move my towers a little farther back so that all of the enemies are going to be coming down these three lanes. Um, that way I don't need to spread out my defenses as much. I just need to focus them in one area uh, to make sure I get everything. And what I especially like about the harpoon turrets is that they have infinite pierce, pretty much. I haven't seen them not have infinite pierce, pretty much. Uh, so uh, as long as they're coming down this long hallway, or staircase, I guess, um, the harpoon turret will be able to pierce right through all of them. So that's a nice little... Um, what's the term? like bottleneck effect, uh, and again because now I have the harpoon turrets, the archers are no problem. Although apparently in this level, or at least this round, um, they weren't very smart, they just kind of walked right into my spike blockade. So that's nice. Now already I have a spike blockade and a harpoon turret in front of all of these staircases. So I'm pretty much set. Uh, I could just upgrade them and then I don't know, maybe build a couple more, because uh, there is something new this level, the weapons. Uh, they don't come very soon in this level, but they do come, so oops, um, I will need to change up, or not change up my defenses, but uh, uh, build a few more harpoon turrets to deal with the wyverns, or wyverns, or however you pronounce them. Uh, I've heard it both ways, or multiple ways, I guess. Uh, what else, what else, what else? I probably should have collected all the mana, uh, that would have been nice. But, because my defenses are pretty good as they are, I'm not too worried about collecting mana. Because all I'm using them for is upgrading, and like I said, my defenses are pretty well off. So there's not really much of a need to upgrade. It's more just because I want to. Uh, now, there is a tower that I get, I think, at level 15? Maybe... Maybe 11? I don't know what level exactly. Uh, but it's the bowling ball tower. Which, I kind of consider it more of a cannonball tower, but I suppose bowling ball works. Um, instead of the way the harpoon turret pierces through all of its enemies, uh, the bowling ball bounces off its enemies. Which, I suppose, can be helpful in some instances, but every time I use it, it's usually better to use the harpoon turret. Just in my opinion. Um, because the pierce can go can go through uh, all the enemies, but the bowling ball turret only bounces around, I think, five or eight times before it bursts. So uh, you've got a pretty limited amount of attacks, I guess, with the bowling ball. Even though the bowling ball turret does have a much longer, narrower range, uh, so it is better, I guess, for the really long straight paths in that regard. But again, if you have a really long, straight, narrow path, then the harpoon turret would probably be better because it can just pierce right through all of them. So that's my little opinion on the 
bowling ball and harpoon turrets. Now check the minimap and in the bottom corners you can see that there's wyverns or the little orange things with the two next one. Uh, that means that they'll come through that door down there and then they'll just fly up towards the crystal. So I'm going to need a couple harpoon turrets. Uh, now right now I only have enough mana for one. Then I just need to go over here and then get some more mana. Now I'm not 100% sure if my harpoon turrets will be enough. The problem that I have with the squire uh, turrets or towers or whatever is that they're really good for getting multiple enemies in a lane but they don't really have as much anti-air in the terms of area of effect because all of their or all of his the only two long range towers that he has is the harpoon turret and the bowling ball turret uh, as opposed to the apprentice that has four long range the lightning tower is a little close range but still it's pretty good uh, especially for area of effect type of things um, the problem with the harpoon turrets is that it pierces through a lot of enemies but it doesn't necessarily hit a large group of enemies now I could have made another harpoon turret but um, I'm sure it'll do okay uh, Weaverns, the problem I have with them is that because right now I don't have very much range I don't have very much uh, time to hit them because they're not within the harpoon turret's range for very long so it only gets one or two shots off at most but um, for this first wave that doesn't seem to be a problem because there's only two wyverns but in the next wave I'm pretty sure there's going to be three it'll maybe start off with one at first and then another set of three will come after that so that's my problem with them but if I had more attack power then I could easily just kill them in one hit so it wouldn't be a problem or if I had more attack rate or uh, rate of attack type of thing, uh, rate of fire uh, uh, then I would have a little better defense because I'd be able to hit them a little more uh, within the time that they're within my range basically better stats means better outcome usually um, it does your tower placement does make a difference like uh, I was talking about the first episode that I had used some kind of mod to get a bunch of really epic stat type stuff um, but even when your towers are totally overpowered destroy everything on the screen pretty much um, like infinite stats that doesn't necessarily guarantee victory all the time because even if your spike blockade had infinite health and infinite attack power, the wyverns can just fly right over it. So, um, just pure awesome stats isn't enough. You need to use the right towers in the right places, um, and I guess at the right time, to be able to really use all of those epic stats that you would get. Uh, so I'm not actually that worried about whether or not uh, the way I'm distributing my stats is good enough um, because like I said it's a little bit more about your tower placement than just the power of your towers even though obviously the power of your towers is very important you, you could have the best placement of your towers but if they have zero stats then they're not going to do anything so you kind of have to balance that but then again that's not really like some bold new strategy it's just kind of the way the game works uh, now I probably didn't need to get hit right there, but uh, I try to stay near the towers when there's wyverns because then hopefully they'll target me rather than the crystal. Because occasionally, uh, if the harpoon turret or whatever tower you're using um, doesn't hurt them well enough, then they'll usually just kind of fly right over them and then go towards the crystal. And then you'll, unless you have a tower facing the crystal, you'll have to go in there yourself and get rid of them kind of like uh, dealing with an archer. So that's uh, the basics of the wyverns. Uh, and you might have noticed that I placed another turret here and I'm upgrading these a little more. I upgraded this one twice uh, because um, you can upgrade your towers multiple times. I think five times, I don't remember, maybe seven, um, and you, what do you do, uh, you, 
<sighs> lose my train of thought because I'm trying to think about the game as I talk about the game. Um, each time you upgrade the tower, obviously it does get a little stronger. I don't think the difference between non-upgraded and upgraded once is the same as upgraded once and upgraded twice, if that makes sense. Um, but obviously upgrading it more makes it better. I don't know exactly what the ratio would be between um, building two towers and then build or between building one tower upgraded once and building two towers non-upgraded. Like, I don't know if upgrading it once doubles it, or, you know what I mean? Uh, it would probably be better to just build a lot of towers and then start upgrading them, rather than just build one, upgrade it a bunch, build another, upgrade it a bunch. But again, that's just my uh, opinion, because I haven't actually looked into that very much. Alright. And again, you might have noticed that I'm putting more defenses on this one than I am on the others. And that is because, like in Foundries of Forges, there is an ogre on this stage, and he will be coming down this middle lane, so I'm going to be preparing for that by putting even more harpoon turrets. However, uh, something you should try to remember is that because of those two uh, corner doors on the side right there where I'm looking, uh, there will be more enemies coming in from the sides rather than from the front, but because the ogre is a little more important, uh, I'm putting more defenses on the front rather than the sides, even though the side has more uh, enemies. Alright, now again, I should probably go around collecting mana, but I'm fairly confident with my setup right now. So, in fact, I'm so confident, I'm going to stand up here, get a good look at both wyverns, uh, just to make sure that I get everything. It's a nice little viewpoint you can zoom in to get first person view. You can even press H uh, once to get rid of the view of your weapon and then twice to get rid of the view of your HUD. Then you can press H again to bring back your weapon and then bring back your HUD. So for this little moment I'm just going to scan the area uh, to see how all my defenses are going which I could just press shift or left shift uh, to bring up the mini-map but of course when I have it hidden I can't. All right. Um, I'd say this is pretty good for now. Just let you watch that. Alright, so uh, as you can see, there's more wyverns. There are four of them now. Which means I may have to fight some. Uh, yep. Or actually, no. Because that one is actually attacking the harpoon turrets, and it got within the range of the attack, and I almost died. Because uh, there's a little lava pits right there, and down there. If you fall on that, you will die. And you will lose all the mana that you're carrying. Alright, what else should I talk about? I don't have enough mana for that. Um, Alright, uh, there's some more wyverns coming, and I didn't keep track to see... Yep, they're all dead. And, oh wow, I really need to go repair that over there. It's very good to keep track of the HP of all your defenses. Because, uh, obviously, soon it's not doing so good. Oh, and there's an ogre. Forgot this was the final wave. Uh, instead of repairing it, I'm going to upgrade it. Because upgrading, uh, usually by the later half of the game, uh, upgrading will usually go faster than your uh, repairing. Because especially for something like a spike blockade, you're going to be giving it a lot of HP. Um, so if you are... You can increase the speed that you repair and upgrade, but right now I don't have any stats in that. I only have def uh, stats in my defenses. So if it has like 10,000 HP, uh, it's going to take me a while to repair it. But if I can upgrade it um, to one level, then it's not going to be as long as if I was repairing 10,000 HP. And whenever you repair it, it restores it to full health. And I probably should have repaired that too, but it survived, so it's good. All good. Alright, now I leveled up. Yay, more stats and stuff. And you can probably tell that there's uh, equipment 
all over the place, and I'm not really going for it because it doesn't really matter. Uh, well, actually, that increases my um, casting rate, uh, increases the speed that I repair and upgrade, so that's always nice. Uh, that, one, mm, that one increases my attack rate of the defenses. But you know what? I'm not going to go for that because I like my defenses to have even stats. Which probably is not the best move, but it's what I do and it works. So I'm going to stick with that. Oh, that's not very good. Boots. Uh, yeah, I guess that's better. And I don't have any armor on my chest, so that works. And I'm just going to check this chest. <laughs> uh, nope. And yeah. Alright, so that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.